and these became known as the Penal Laws. In 1829, Daniel O'Connell, this man that we see commemorated here at the head of O'Connell Street, uh, succeeded in overturning uh, some of those laws which allowed the Irish uh, the right to vote. And it's for that reason that we commemorate him and his memory by naming this street and the monument after him. Just here on the left, we have the GPO. This is the General Post Office. And again, a very important building in Irish history. And, uh, uh, it was in 1916 that the Irish rebels uh, took the GPO, the General Post Office, and uh, declared Ireland uh, free from the British. Now, that uprising or insurrection uh, didn't actually uh, succeed. It lasted only a week. But what happened after that, and particularly when the leaders of the Rising were executed, uh, really made the Irish band together the Irish as one, mm. which hadn't actually been the case up until then. And uh, what followed was the War of Independence with the British, which ultimately led to uh, the 26 counties of Ireland uh, becoming the Free State. So uh, a very important um, building in our history uh, for the events that took place there in 1916. I mentioned that this is the main street of Dublin and that it is and there's always a lot of activity along here. It's a very good shopping area. There's a region here known as Henry Street, which is a large, large pedestrianised uh, street, and there are lots of department stores uh, down there, so that will always attract a great number of people uh, to go and have a browse around. Uh, Oh, yeah. Will just ask me to check, is the temperature okay for you? Yeah. Yeah, and down the back, are you okay as well? Yeah. Yes. Do you need any cold air down there or? No, no. no. Fine. Yeah, it's just it's so damp today, isn't it? It's a kind of uh, muggy, kind. it's a muggy kind of um, climate today. Have you been? Yeah. yeah. Nope. So, uh, in just a few moments, uh, we're going to Steve. go and uh, oh drive yeah, around one of uh, the uh, number of Georgian squares yeah, that we have here in Dublin. Georgian That's architecture right. is the style of architecture that essentially um, characterises the city of Dublin. And it's a style of archite architecture that evolved between roughly 1730 and 1860 here in Ireland. Dublin was part of the British Empire at that stage and in fact the second city of the Empire. So it stands to reason that many of the houses uh, were built in the style that was very fashionable uh, in Britain and London and various other cities uh, during that time. On the right hand side here we have the Rotunda Hospital that dates back to the 1800s and it was the first purpose built maternity hospital in Britain and Ireland. So it obviously it was a very important uh, hospital. It was known originally as the Lying In Hospital, which I always think makes it sound like pregnancy and childbirth is easy. Yeah, the Lying In, you just go for a little rest, <laughs> hop out the baby, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, you're lying in. Yeah, so it sounds almost like, little, I don't know, a holiday home. Yeah, sleep over. <laughs> but uh, it's located right here in Parnell Square, oh, Square one shop. of the uh, Georgian Squares that I mentioned characterises the city of Dublin. Uh, still in use today, uh, still a very important hospital. It's one of three major hospitals, three major maternity hospitals that we have in Dublin city uh, at the moment. So we see our first glimpse of some of the lovely Georgian houses here surrounding the square. Uh, four storeys above the basement, this was very definitely the style. Uh, and Georgian specifications were really quite strict as well. But over on our right here, you can see the blue railings, and then they turn to black. And just behind the black railings here, we have the Garden of Remembrance. Uh, I thought I heard a few British accents on board, did I? Yes. As you were getting on. Well, you may have followed the visit of Queen Elizabeth II to Dublin last year, which was just to the Garden of Remembrance, which was opened in 1966, which was the 50th anniversary of the 1916 Rising. And she walked the length of the gardens there. And this garden is dedicated to the memory of all of those Irish men and women who gave their lives for Irish independence. And I'm sure it's not lost on you, this gesture that Queen Elizabeth made, to lay a wreath here to commemorate those very individuals, because, you know, the facts are the facts. Most of those people died at the hands uh, of the British but in saying that, many British people died at the hands of the Irish. So for this woman to come and lay the wreath here in the Garden of Remembrance, it was a gesture that was very much uh, appreciated by Irish people and uh, one that certainly uh, moved very many of us um, because it was just, it was very striking when she did that. Um, and it was a truly amazing 
visit, I must say, a truly amazing visit. And I think it's fair to say that uh, the visit of the Queen to Dublin last year in May uh, certainly went a huge way towards healing any residual tensions that might still have remained. Uh, it was just, it was just a most incredible visit, and one that gathered momentum with every day that went by. She was here for four days, and uh, it was just really quite incredible. So we're coming down now the other side of uh, O'Connell Street and of course I must point out at uh, the elephant in the room here this uh, huge spire uh, which was erected to uh, commemorate the new millennium but I suppose you could argue in true Irish style uh, it wasn't completed until 2003 so just a little bit behind <laughs> schedule yeah uh, but it's, it, it is actually an amazing structure I at the time uh, worked in an office just off O'Connell Street and when this was erected you know it was erected in something like 16 different pieces and just even the installation of this piece in itself uh, was just quite incredible because the last few pieces posed huge logistical uh, problems and I would say for the organizers nightmares because the last pieces uh, needed an extremely high crane to lift the piece up and then to slot it into position and then to lock it into position and they encountered all kinds of dreadful weather uh, high winds and gusting winds and everything like that and they had to abandon the work on a number of occasions so that contributed to the fact that uh, it wasn't completed until 2003 but uh, Dublin it? Hmm? I was afraid you'd ask me that because I forget how high it is. It's very high. It's very high. <laughs> in fact, it's so high that in the beginning, they actually had to put a little red light on top because uh, they were afraid because we're quite, well, when I say quite close, we're a matter of kilometers from Dublin airport. And uh, they were just afraid of any uh, low flying aircraft uh, hitting it. So that the red uh, light flashed for a couple of months before uh, it was just kind of, I suppose, established as a new landmark, uh, but uh, quite incredible. I must